Pete Galair, and welcome to the Loaf of Bread GA podcast, slicing into the GA of the past, present, and future. Join me, Jason Keelan, as we cut into the largest loaf of bread known to mankind. Hello, Diagwitch, Bonjour, Nihao, Konnichiwa, Guten Tag, and Privyat to you all wherever you're listening in. What started as a message to 10 clubs has now expanded to more than 50 clubs globally from all continents. The journey through Loaf 2 GA Global continues this week as we move on to our next destination in the GA world. So come with me on the GA journey of a lifetime and meet clubs from Canada to Argentina, South Africa to Gibraltar, Bermuda to the North Pole, New Zealand to Kuwait, Knoxville to Qatar and literally everywhere in between. So grab the passports, grab the bags, it's time to go. Good day once again to you all as we wake up in sunny Australia. Today's trip in Slice 11 is a very short one. In fact, we're actually staying within the same area as last week, New South Wales. Here we go into one of the clubs within the New South Wales County Board, as it may be called, and catch up with William and Johnny from Cormac McAnallen, GAA in Sydney. We learn all about the links and naming of the club after the great Tyrone legend himself, his memory living on through the club and in the Cormac Trust, rivalries within the New South Wales teams and the Australian territories, and of course, the lads answer the same vital questions as New South Wales did last week. But first, as usual, let's take a trip through Sydney and the area around it. But as a tribute this week, we also have a quick look back at the man who, sadly, in many ways, gave the club its name. The late great Tyrone legend, Cormac McAnallen. Bon soltos. We arrive into Sydney to be greeted by the iconic image of the Harbour Bridge and the Opera House with the blue skies. It's the vision I had when I was there in 2013. Of course I hate heights and bridges so looking back from afar was good enough for me. Sydney is home to just over 5 million people in total, roughly the same as Ireland. It's the New South Wales capital and Australia's most populated city. It was a little over 32,000 years ago that the first Aborigines in the area arrived, who were called the Eura. It's around the late 18th century when British explorer Captain James Cook rocked up to Botany Bay in the area and thus began the process of colonisation by the British Crown. Sydney would become the first settlement in the country. When the USA signed the Declaration of Independence in 1776, it ended the old trade of slaves to and from Britain. As a result, new lands were sought and Australia was chosen. Sydney was born and named after the Home Secretary of the time, Thomas Townsend, aka Lord Sydney. Over time, the city grew economically and otherwise. The various internal wars did little to change the overall city. However, the events of World War II did change things as Japan attacked the city on two different occasions of note. In modern times, the city has grown to become a major place of economic and cultural importance, and despite being more expensive than Ireland in many ways, it remains one of the most desirable cities in the world to live in. What is there to see, you ask? Well, of course, you could come down off the Harbour Bridge for a start, The bridge was opened in 1932, more than four decades before the nearby Sydney Opera House. In 73, Danish architect Jorn Utzon announced the completion of the Opera House, more than 10 years behind schedule. Utzon was paid 5,000 for his work. It should have cost 7 million. It cost, in the end, 102 million. American civil rights activist and singer Paul Robeson will be the first to sing at the site in 1960. Ironically, he climbed the scaffolding to sing to the workers. My favourite band, the Manic Street Preachers, wrote a song called Let Ropes and Sing in 2001 about his life. It was Queen Elizabeth II who officially opened the Opera House in 1973. But of course there are many beaches and shops aplenty, alongside many great places to eat. Famous names from the metropolitan region of Sydney and its surroundings include music stars Delta Goodrum, Iggy Azalea and Five Seconds of Summer, rugby stars Adam Ashley Cooper, Kirtley Beale, Michael Hooper, former Leinster coach Michael Checa and player Scott Fardy, and Bernard Foley. Screen stars Hugh Jackman, Ellie McPherson, Miranda Kerr and Rebel Wilson. In sport, the Sydney Swans dominate the AFL side. The club has hosted many famous names, but also some iconic Irish names of note, including Kerry All-Ireland winner Ty Kennelly and tip star Colm Norreardon, while the likes of Kyle Coney, Carlos star Brendan Murphy and Derry star and podcast guest Chrissy McCaig all had stints as rookies in the club. In soccer, Sydney FC provide the main force in the city. Previous grades such as Dwight York, Janino Paulista and Alessandro Del Piero all end up for the club in the past. 
while Irish international Simon Cox lined out for city rivals Western Sydney Wanderers in the past also. It was between the years 1990 and 1997 that a young secondary school pupil from St Patrick's Grammar School in Armagh came to prominence on the GEA scene. In 1997, Cormac was part of the Tyrone Ulster Minor winning side that would lose the All-Ireland final to Leash that year. But was that his greatest moment that year? Many at the time would say no, because on the 6th of June 1997, Cormac and friends Michael Collins and Darren McCann would win something far more prestigious. Let's meet this evening's teams in our second semi-final. Over here at St. Patrick's Grammar School from Armagh, and team captain is Cormac McAnallan. It's sport. Which snooker star is sometimes referred to as the rocket? Ronnie Sullivan is correct. In your second question. Which top golfer's regular caddy is the Swedish female champion, Fanny Sunison? McFaldo is correct. The RT final of Blackboard Jungle hosted by Ray Darcy. If you don't know it, then check it out. During his career, Cormac won pretty much all there was. Championships with his club Eglish in Tyrone, Dublin senior football titles with his college UCD, Young Footballer of the Year, Ulster Senior titles, the list at every grade was just endless. But in 2003, Cormac and Tyrone reached the peak of their powers at the time. Having never lifted Sam Maguire before, the men from Tyrone went into battle in Crow Park on September 28th against Northern rivals, Armagh, who were defending their crown. A GA first having two teams from the same province in the final due to the new backdoor system which arrived in 2001. When you look back at the teams, it really was a pitch littered with talent. On our mass side you had the likes of Tough Nuts, Francie Bellew, Enda McNulty, Kira McGinney and Andy Mallon in defence, with McConville, McDonnell and the McEntees up front. For Tyrone, Cormac was alongside Ricey McMenamin, with Conor Gormley, Philip Jordan, Doher, Kavanagh, Mulligan and Canavan all in the ranks. They were even able to call on Stephen O'Neill from the bench. In the end, Tyrone prevailed 12 points to 9 and Sam was heading to the O'Neill County for the first time. with his football skills and so comes to an end a long long way as I present this hand to Peter the Great Less than six months later as I remember standing outside English class in St Finian's College in Mullingar my English teacher Jerry Murta announced that Cormac had died suddenly it was a strange moment Cormac was 24 he just won the All-Ireland and every other medal in life too, not just in GA but other sports also. He couldn't possibly be gone, he was only six years older than me at the time, but he was. There's a lot of people I have to thank for getting this team to where we are today. Uh, but first and foremost, and probably the most important man, this man should be here instead of me receiving this cup up today. His name is Cormac McAnall. Several months later, Ireland lined out against Australia in the International Rules Series. Cormac had been on the team in 01, 02, 03. Now in 04, the teams were playing for a trophy in his memory. Cormac McAnall's GA in Sydney was founded in 2005 at the beginning of the year. The aim was to promote and welcome members from all 32 counties and beyond to the GA world in Sydney and live by the way Cormac had. Determined, passionate, dignified but with a winning mentality. Two years later a camogie team formed, swiftly followed by ladies football before hurling arrived in 2012. In the same year Cormac McAnall and GA welcomed a special guest to their club, Tyrone manager Mickey Hart. Mickey had coached Cormac and saw him grow to his potential. Today the Cormac Trust continues to create awareness and support for young people in health and try and prevent the sudden deaths that have taken many young people in their prime, including Cormac. On the field, Cormac McAnall and GA have a list of honours many will be proud of, from various victories at 7s and 10s tournaments right down to beach GA tournament wins. It is an impressive list for a club still technically in its infancy in GA lifetime. And so to our mates in Cormac McAnall and GA, let's meet William and Johnny and find out all about the crack in Sydney and how the great Tyrone fullback remains alive in name and spirit in the club. Oh, William, how are things? Good, and yourself? Ah, sure, I'm all right. How's all out there? It's grand now. 
I have another lad that said he'd join us, Johnny Brophy, Wicklow man. Yeah, he uh, he logged on to the meeting there a little while ago, so uh, he'll probably be back in a few minutes, I'd say. So. Oh, yeah, not too bad. What's the, what's the crack out there, anyway? Yeah, much the same old, just working away and all that. Yeah. It's raining here at the moment. It's raining here at the moment. And well, it's not raining here. From... Fantastic. Yeah, we're sitting <laughs> home from work this morning at 10 o'clock and probably no work tomorrow. Really? Yeah, that happens here, like when it rains, we're in civil construction, like so a lot of work on roadways and things. So And you're told to yeah, go home. Yeah, for a few days when it rains, like. Yeah, Jesus man. Some difference to home, like. <laughs> yeah. You would you wouldn't you wouldn't be sent home uh, <laughs> here anyway. So Oh definitely not. <laughs> and uh whereabouts are you from originally? Uh Brusna, be a small club in North Kerry. Yeah, I had a I had a Kerry girl on yesterday uh, from Saigon Gales in Vietnam. She was um she was North Kerry as well, not uh not too far from Ballybunion, I think. Oh yeah, Bale Ballybunion back there. Yeah, day, uh... yeah, it's one of those places you said there so, sounds familiar. Yeah, <laughs> she was good Very crack good. anyway. So yeah, I'll buy you. Well, how are things? Yourself. You're a Wicklow man, Johnny. Is that right? Yeah. Just blessing. Oh yeah, not too bad yet. I had a I had Davy Burke on actually on the podcast, uh, one of the early episodes here, Wicklow manager. So Davy Burke, oh he's from yeah, he's from down around the Corra somewhere, isn't he? He'd originally uh Confi and Kildare, kind of that direction. And uh yeah, he uh he made the move over to over to Wicklow. Uh but it was a good thing or not now we'll we'll never know. <laughs> all make bad mistakes. <laughs> and uh how's all out there with you? Yeah, yeah, all good. Just walking away. Yeah, you weren't sent. You weren't sent home from work at ten o'clock this morning, though. No, no, no. That's the job. working for yourself. Oh, I yeah, know. <laughs> Is that? Oh, you sent yourself home, will you? Was that what it was? <coughs> no, I don't. <laughs> Johnny has that luxury. He walks it himself, so he can't go home. Ah, fair enough. That's all right, yeah. And uh, the two we are part of Horwick McAnalls. Is that right? Am I the right club I have? Yeah, correct. So I suppose I'd been involved there since about 2010. Johnny would be probably a year or two before me, but I suppose yeah. 2000, I'm here since 2009 and I got involved in 2010. And it was through another Kerry man that I got involved, I was working with, and he just ha- happened to ask me to help him to help out with a ladies' training session. And the following year, I took the ladies, and I was in the committee in 2012. and Chairman in 13 and stood down for two years then and went home and went to WA and was chairman again in 16, 17, 18, 19 and 20. Jesus, so you've, you've had your hands full since you've been out there, so. Yeah, so I'm bigly involved with it, but look, that's, it was always a big part of life and it's good to be involved in it here too. Yeah. And what was, uh, did you play when you were back home in North Kerry or? I played a bit yeah, with the local yeah. club, but I hung up the boots. I hung up the boots when I came out here. <laughs> who was the Who was the club at home? Uh, Brusna. wasn't itself. Oh, very good chat. Yes. And uh, yeah. what brought I'm you out to? Yeah, I'd I uh, be familiar with tomorrow, right, yes. What brought you out to Australia then? County board chairman at the moment would be a Brusna man, Tim Murphy. Murphy, okay. Yeah, so uh, he'd be he's in his fifth term, like so he'd be he'd be a Brusna man, but. Yeah, Australia, I suppose, back in 2009, it was, I suppose, it all happened all of a sudden, really. I was yeah. walking away and I, had a few, I was working for myself and I had a few lads with me and the weather wasn't great after Christmas and there was a mate of mine home from Australia and telling me all about it and <laughs> after a few pints that evening, I went home and applied for a visa and I, I it got approved and I was in Australia 10 days later. It's, yeah, it's it's the way a lot of people's stories have seemed to be. Yeah, uh, I met someone, had a few pints, and suddenly I was I was in a different country a few days later. Yeah, so, but no, a lot of people gave me, oh, he'd be back in a couple of weeks and all this, but thirteen years, twelve and a half years later, I'm still here. And you still haven't picked up uh, picked up the accent. No, hopefully I never will. <laughs> and uh, your plan is the long term plan: stay out there now, is it? Oh uh, look! If you talk to anyone like Colin Daly was on with you there Monday night, yeah. I'm talking. About, I'm talking about going home with five years and I'm still here. So, <laughs> yeah, and it's every same. day, yeah, every day is a come. Like it was with COVID and all. Like we've been looking in this country. Like we, we live basically a normal life here. Like compared to home with lockdowns and all, and you know, it's it's kind of 
to, to leave here and now you need I'm a citizen so you need an exemption to leave the country and all like so mm. just at so the you- moment I just stay put and hopefully things pick up that some bit in the next couple of months and uh, look about making a move at the end of the year or the start of next year yes that's a common enough kind of trend at the moment I suppose chatting to a lot of people as well so Johnny is it the same for you a few points and you ended up in Australia somehow no she was Mrs was chasing me to go for probably two years I was same working for myself and things were good Hmm. but that was 2007 just started to feel Dublin closing down. You had we gone from like six months work ahead of you to three to one to maybe having two weeks and then maybe mm. a week and nothing. And then you said you saw right. you saw the recession coming nearly in some ways. But kinda, yeah. Yeah. And uh is the long term plan to stay out there then or uh, so I'm the same as him. I'm going home this five or six years as well. <laughs> you're all you're all going home, yeah. Everyone is telling me they're coming yeah. home, yeah. And then uh, suddenly they look out the window and realize it's not pissing rain all the time. So yeah, they don't want to go home. Then yeah, I want look out here now. <laughs> I've heard, yeah, I've heard. Well, it's actually surprisingly sunny here today, which is a uh, just unusual. Though it is early days, it's only half ten in the morning, so I wouldn't get yeah. wouldn't get too excited yet. And uh, what were the early days like for you? Were you playing, or was it straight into coaching as well? Or no, no. Uh, what did I play? I played from. Well, I played. <sighs> Yeah, not able to walk. Uh, <laughs> no, I played the, the first year I came out. I played probably six months of the year, and then did the AC, I mean ACL, I mean E, and then right. that kind of knocked that on the head. Hmm. It wasn't completely gone, so I got away with not having to get an operation, hmm. and basically went back then the following year and played up until probably fifteen, maybe sixteen, was it? Probably 2015 or 16, and I've made a few appearances since. <laughs> Gets appearances yeah. off the bench, yes. <laughs> yeah. And uh, what you, what, what's the role now then? I've, I've, well, I've done like 12 or 13, 12, 11 or 12 years there of it. I just stepped back sort of in the last couple of years, last last, last year and year before. I just okay. stepped back, yeah. And yeah, so is not, there, not as much now as what I was at. They haven't come knocking on your door looking for you to take the team yet. Oh, there's been five or six phone calls this year already. <laughs> You're just block, blocking numbers as they come, is it? Yeah, like I moved away from where I moved away from where the training and all is. Right. Well, like where I'm living is probably forty minutes drive over and back to training, and then. That's and then yeah, you're there half an hour before you have an hour training, and then an hour of talking shit. And after <laughs> Stand, standard GA training session, so yeah, 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 or maybe into the fridge in the back of the van and a handful of bosses drank out oh, the yeah. back of the van. So it sounds yeah. like a, it sounds like a standard commute from Wicklow to Dublin, so for a training session and back again, it, it doesn't sound too different. Yeah. Uh, in fairness, yeah, no, yes, you were. You were talking about the the training set up there, William. Where have you got a? I ask a lot of the clubs. Have you got a permanent ground for training or for matches or anything, or is it just up in the draw? No, I, it, everything be rent through council here, like mm. and like every yeah. year. We've been lucky enough mm. now in the last couple of years. And it was actually a temporary girl, Leonie Maher, was uh, the um, booking officer for uh, Bayside Council, and we got into. Borley Park is the name of it there over the last couple of years and we've been lucky enough that we were able to hold that for say the winter season and then in the summer season like all the clubs would be on the same two or three pitches the month of January February March like you walk into Centennial Park and the first pitch you see like it could be Michael Cusick Scar Mac and Adams mm. uh, Central Coast Plan the Gale you have all the clubs could be training in the same two or three pitches every night like so it is it is hard enough at times to get training pitches and things and like where we played in every Sunday is about a forty-five minute drive, and that's council property too. But back in I suppose two thousand thirteen, Egon Fall was the president, and he mm. was out for state games, and we built our own pitch there, and he officially opened that, like New South Wales, like. But now we, it's every year just booking places for summer and winter, and hopefully you're not rejected, and that you get what you want. There's some nights there, even currently, like it's you mightn't have a training pitch. You'll, 
have to go to a gym or get some PT to take it for a session. And like, it is uh, hard enough and challenging enough at times. Like, yeah, I should I should have asked as well actually at the at the start. I meant to ask um all the clubs I've had on like you know the, the names are fairly obvious like you know it's based on the city and stuff. Corner of Macanallans is that in honor of the great man himself or is there any link to the club name? Uh it's it's called after Cormac himself. Yeah, and mm. it's, it's, it was founded Cormac died in two thousand and four March two thousand and four from mm. SATS and was sudden adult death syndrome and. It was the following year after anniversary mass down Bondi Road and Lee Mahara, uh, be a Tyrone man, uh, Eamon East would be Cookstone and Tyrone and Tommy Joe Johnson from Cargan and County Antrim. And they said they'd set up a club in Carmack's honour in his name. So they went to the family with the ID and yeah, they were, they were happy. And look, there was things set up like in how they wanted the, his name honoured and Mm. and all that so yeah in 2005 they started a team just to play a one-off tournament and players came from other clubs like Barry Devine left Pinrit for to play in the game and it was a few like that and Owen Mulligan uh, no it was it Mulligan no. Brian 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 uh... Brian McGregan and Hub Hughes and Tyrone were out yeah, and they were here at that time okay. they were here at the time they played in the first yeah that time and they kept it going and that was all five and all six then they started the Camogie team and right. in 2008 they started the ladies football and in 2012 uh, they started the holding. So there was but, all four codes and in a, in a short space of time like in 16 years, 17 playing seasons. and yeah, That's, that, that's impressive in fairness for a club to start kind of as a a memorial almost um, from a player. I do remember actually when you said yeah, March 2004 I, I remember standing outside I was in secondary school at the time, standing outside the class, and it was a teacher that said to me that he passed away. And I, I, it's funny, I always remember where I was standing when, um, when I heard about him. But uh, that's incredible that the, the club has gone from like a memorial, basically, to you know one of the strong clubs in New South Wales. Yeah, a lot of work put into it by Liam and Eamon in the early days and them and... <laughs> I suppose there was another girl I had given mention to Donna Ferguson. Like she was, she played football for Tan Miguel, and she was a big part in in um, starting up the Camogie here in two thousand and six. And unfortunately, Donna was only here for a year, and she was she was a journalist, and on her way out here, she was in Bali in the time of the Bali bombings, and she did um, she was on uh, RTE News and all. She broadcasted them, but. When she went home, she was on her. She was taking a month off from college and working in a radio station in Oman, and she was tragically killed in a car accident. So oh, we have right. a, an award. Yeah, we have an award in the club for called after Donna. Well, wow. so like she was a big part in starting Camogie that time in in '06, and yeah, then followed on from that with ladies football and holding and. Wow, that's uh, yeah, it's it's but, impressive, isn't it? So, like when you when you look back on it now, I suppose. Oh, it is. I, like, you struggle at the start, like, and I see with holding in 2015, probably we had eight players, and, like, Johnny himself used to be there on a Sunday, and you beg him to play in goals, and <laughs> John Rooney, who did a cruciate. Yes, I even trained one year, fuck you. Yeah, so, like, it was, like, <laughs> you had eight players, and we just kept going, kept going, and you'd be beaten by 30, 40, 50 points, and, it was hard to ask players to come back and to that every every Sunday. Mm. And, but look, a lot of work went into behind the scenes by a lot of people. And then we got a, a lot of Cork boys, Newtown Chandron boys like Carl Nocton and Mikey Bowles and All right. uh, Ryan Fallon and Jack Hurley, to, to mention a few. And yeah. like we went from strength to strength and Aidan Flynn, a lot of work put in there too and recruiting players. And like we're we're getting there. Yeah, no, so, definitely. Yeah, but it sounds very yeah. What's the uh, what's the right? Because I've had um, I had Colin and, and Linda and um, Lee on the other day from New South Wales. What's the what's the rivalry like, Johnny, between the the different clubs? Um, the rivalry has yeah. There's some some of the clubs have big rivalries, but it seems to change with the different years and different players, and um, it's like. When we started off, it was always Young Ireland's and Mackinac's. That 2008, 2000, 
2008, 9, 10 was probably, and then the, it, it's just that you have that big of a change over a player's that uh, they know someone in the other team and they start kind of half mixing and then there's they're stirring each other up and it just, yeah, the, the rivalries change over and back all the time. Yeah. And yeah what- we, we, with us, we were probably one of the strong clubs that always was there and um, we were sort of always there or thereabouts in the rivalries. So you were the one starting the fights in the middle of it all then? Oh, and there's been one or two, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I was going to ask if there are any standout fights you can remember. But <laughs> standout fights? Oh, standout fights, a good row, a good clipping of somebody. Oh, Benny McLaughlin will have to be up there with that one. <laughs> he might he might be the answer to a question in Little Hoyle so that I that I'll ask him, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is there uh what's the sponsorship setup like, William Free? Uh, it's good then all like the last couple of years, like our main sponsor there be the Moor Park yeah. View Hotel, like with the last three or four years, like so that's where we go after games and things and like they, they, they do a lot of work for us and a lot of Irish companies like uh Cedar Constructions and CLMU and like Oz Labour, Oz Labour Hire, Taste Ireland, like a lot of them, like it is, look, it is a lot to be asking. You, you'd have a turnover every three or four years of different sponsors and mm. things like but no, the Irish-owned uh, companies, like they're always very good to the GA scene here. Like. You haven't had to go around with the uh, the club lotto three for a five or getting lads at the bar signing up, no? No, we haven't got it started that yet, anyway. We did a good fundraiser there a couple of years ago, and like we'd be well set up from it. it was, we got the ID. Colin came up with the ID from um, EC for Aiden Akinespe's club in, in Boston, and it's a one hundred club draw. Like so, we've that running in the last five years, and we make a good share of money off that each year, and donate a good bit to charity and things out of it. So we do, we do well with that, and we would be in a good. Position, the place, yeah. So I, I had a, I was given Linda, Linda Lodge. I was given her an idea there the other day. She came on straight from training, so she was in the car. I said it's a great idea for a carpool karaoke fundraiser there if, uh, if she was interested. So yeah. she was, <laughs> she was uh, straight from training, still in the gear, still dying after training. I'd say so. Uh, she's she's one of yours actually, isn't she? No, geez, she no. be Michael Cusick. Oh, no. she's Cusick. Sorry, would be too happy if you called her Colin McAllen's though. Oh, sure, look, no, yeah. yeah. It'd be Michael Cusick's club, yeah. Yeah, I've I'd be uh, I've that many clubs at this stage. I, I'm probably tagging people in the wrong the wrong ones as well at the moment. So, uh, yeah, no. Um, do you get to keep up much with the uh, the GA back home, Johnny? Um, I was following it probably for, and then again last year, sort of. Well, COVID nearing, I didn't see any football last year. I don't think. Hmm. I don't think I, I might have watched. I think I watched two club games that were shown on but up before that like I had the GA go was a great thing when it came out how he was it was in four four or five years now is it? Yeah it is about that yeah and it was yeah I get up nearly every Sunday night to watch what was going on and but see in regards to inter-county footballers now I wouldn't know the half of it. A true Wicklow fan <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sounds good, there's, yeah. Probably still, there's probably still lads playing for Wicklow that were playing when I was playing at home did you ever you, you, didn't, you didn't line out for the county at any stage no I was back minor I was in the panel I, for a while hey, you're really, you're really yeah. playing that playing that down as if it's not a big thing like you know, minor minor football no. is nothing to be nothing to be sneered at now minor football in Wicklow now wouldn't be <laughs> and then <laughs> broke three fingers Okay, that probably What's doesn't that? help, yeah. No. Probably, probably no, not ideal, not yeah. That. Yeah, yep. William, William, are you just waiting for uh, sort of Munster final, All-Ireland final time, or do you do you watch the games in between? No, sure. Last year, was, you, you would not have been waiting last year, and the, <laughs> yeah. an upset from, the upset from Cork, yeah. like, was... Yeah, I suppose you'd be always thinking, yeah, you're going to be there, thereabouts, and... But I wouldn't like Johnny. I wouldn't. I wouldn't follow it as much in the last two or three years. And I suppose it's with the times games around two, like at three or four o'clock mm. on a Monday morning here, and you're up for work at half five or five or half five, and 
probably a few times tonight before either wouldn't <laughs> wouldn't 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 help matters getting up when you're when you're on really have to get up. But yeah. No, to be honest, I wouldn't I wouldn't follow it as much as I did previous years and I just see the longer well for me in a way, the longer in the way I suppose the more contacts I'd lose in it and I suppose it's not knowing club players coming up through and like it's even even to go home there and like club games and there's players on your own team that you'd have to ask who's he who's the, who's that one yeah. and like you lose touch a little small bit I suppose and you get in a bit invest in your own bubble here and yeah are you still able to keep up the hatred of Cork though as a carry man oh yeah <laughs> you never lose that anyway <laughs> I don't know as a Cork man like so oh, he, he have a hatred for Kerry too so it's a great old rivalry there oh yeah bro- I- Bruce and like and the Kerry Cork Limerick border so he's great rivalry with Abbey Field and all and Limerick oh, yeah. going through hey, the years growing up and all, like it was once a final once a championship so we're always a good thing we're always a, a great weekend yeah you, pay, you can't lose that rivalry for sure yes uh, jo- Johnny is there uh, is there any standout celebration nights you can remember from uh, from the pubs celebration week there was <laughs> true Irish fashion then the first Jesus, the first year, 2008, was the first championship that the club won. And <clears throat> uh just happened that we had a dinner dance organised, sort of it was a, a meet and greet or a question and answer thing. And mm. they had Ty Kennelly. Who was your man from Leash that played with? Zach Lines. No, before that again. Um... He went back Be- and played Begley. Begley. Um, Begley, yeah. yeah. Colin Begley. Colin Begley, yeah. Colin Begley and the club flew out, Peter Cannaval. Wow. For this meet and greet, uh, or this whatever was question and answer night. And uh, I think Tyrone, were Tyrone, the 2008 Tyrone All Ireland final? 2008, oh, yeah. yeah, they were. That's right, yeah. Yeah, uh, because it was the week. Before. <laughs> I do, I didn't want to say it, but yeah, yeah. I can see your face. So, <laughs> yeah. so we had championship final on the Sunday. So we went Sunday, Monday, then ended up out on the Tuesday as well. Then Canavan had a thing in the Penrith Gales on the Wednesday. I think we did presentation night then because we'd no actual dinner dance on the Thursday then the dinner dance itself was on the following weekend ah mentally you just disappeared for a week oh well there was no work done I know that <laughs> William were you were you, uh, were you part of this the shindig no that was before my time I didn't get your time yeah on I was with many a good day since on nine as well and what's the what's the success 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 been like actually? You know that we're talking about celebrations. I suppose like oh eight was probably our first men's seen the championship, and we'd have won three or four since uh, we'd have won three or four since that. I suppose I suppose we we were in eight in a row there. We probably oh. won. I'd say we won half of them. But like Tony Martin has Ballinderry, he would have been here for the eight, tagged out for the eight. He was injured for one of them, but it was wow. some record to have like for you know for the club abroad and to play in the to be there to be part of the eight the eight finals. Like but yeah ladies football the first one I suppose was twelve or thirteen and have won a few since Camogie it was some like it was a crazy stat like had lost something like fourteen, fifteen finals before we won one and wow. Uh, yeah, so and I've won two championships in the last few years. There was that first Camogie championship was like the 08 <laughs> celebrations done for you know, done for three or four days as well. Uh, yeah, so no, we have been re- very very successful. Like considering how long we we've been up and running, like and yeah, so it's yeah, going so- well. It's so yeah, successful, yeah. right? Yes. I, I ask all the clubs, well, actually, I suppose it's maybe found it a bit different with the Australian clubs, but have you much of an uptake from locals or international sort of people who aren't Irish originally, or is there just so many Irish out there that you kind of don't need them? Well, in, New, in New South Wales, you know, it's, there's so many Irish here. Like, yeah. we, we have well, about 1,100 people registered, and Jeez. 
<laughs> if you will look at it, there's probably another 11 or 12 hundred that are more than capable of playing it but just couldn't you know they're here to enjoy themselves and things and mm. they see that there with COVID last year and nobody was allowed into the country and things but we were still able to hold our numbers because a few of the older lads uh, the lads that had semi-retired came back and things and but we still held we still held pretty well like all clubs with mm. the, the amount that they were playing and a small bit of a it's more a bit harder this year, right? Maybe with a few went home and we still have nobody coming in to the country, but uh, that would pick up in time. But no, it's, to answer the question, it's mainly, it's all it's all Irish. It's gas when you say 1,100. Like, I've chatted to a couple of clubs around the world so far who said they're struggling to field 11. You know, it's... Uh, yeah, it's 1,100 within New South Wales now with the yeah. nine club. Yeah. Uh, as well as... Uh, I suppose Stephen Tomley thinks Michael Cusick should be the biggest club but if you take the duels <laughs> out of it last year it was actually level it was 180 registered players each wow. <laughs> yeah, so we'd, we'd be up there ourselves and Cusick battling for the biggest the biggest club but look the, we haven't we haven't passed him we haven't passed him yet but we're, we're, yeah. we're close <laughs> to him you're on the you're on the road to it anyway yes uh, Johnny I should probably ask since you mentioned earlier is there is that man that you mentioned the standard Irish lunatic that every club has or that that man you mentioned earlier on I it was a Benny or something or other you mentioned oh, is, Benny. He, is he the standard lunatic oh, no. or is there another one no no Benny Benny you'd be uh, just a don't cross <laughs> right is there yeah. is there any others you can you can take of in the club who would stand out I ask every club for their standard uh, l- lunatic on the pitch. Lunatic on the pitch, um, a general lunatic in yeah, just in general, bro. Yeah, Dave, Colin Daly's brother-in-law. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I'll message him after. And let him know. Is that is, ben, is Benny his brother-in-law? Is that who it is, or is it? No, 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 no. Barry Brogan. Barry Brogan. Okay, I have to remember that name. So yeah, um, yeah. does does the club uh, on nights out? Does uh, does karaoke come in, and does the club have a, a traditional karaoke song they go to? Not in well, was there was one song ah, it's probably back 2007 or or yeah 2008 or nine but I can't even remember what the song is now. It's, there was Wait, one with yeah. If you just there's a video of Cormac, a video of snippets of Cormac pictures playing, and that was the song they used to be singing. But I can't even remember it now. William is in the corner singing it in his head. I think he wants to give us a bar of it to you. Jeez, I wouldn't have, if, if, if I say this would be over fairly, fairly sharpish, I can't hear it. <laughs> you never know. The rest of Kerry could start tuning in when they hear they've got a, a lovely man l- lilting away in the corner. So, No, I can't think of that song either. But I, I wouldn't be great with that, with, with them kind of things. But Yeah. But it was good for the club too back. We were talking about having lads out there. We had Mickey Hart out in 2013 as well for two weeks himself Great. and his brother Ban. Um, we actually had RTE here as well in 2016. And we were celebrating the 1916 the yeah. there was we did we have an annual beach football tournament. Nice. And we made it of all the players 1920-16 era. And it was seen by um, RTE and they, actually, they got in contact and they came out and did interviews with us and with head office and with Taste Island and they gave a week here and things. So that was a great thing to be involved with too when they came here and it was part of Nationwide. It was on, we got a, something like a 10, 15 minutes slot on Nationwide one night at home. Jeez, that's that's a big thing now for our Irish people to get a slot on nationwide. There's many people looking for a slot on that. I'd say all their lives and wouldn't get it. So. Yes. I suppose they were looking at ways how 1916 was commemorated around the world. They can set the celebration yeah. things, and they've seen this, and it was it was good to it was up there. It was good. Yeah, to have that's pretty class. Yes. Um, what's the is it challenge challenging on on all fronts now for the the coming months, or what's the what's the aims? Yeah, I suppose we're getting to the latter stages of the of our league, but it's I suppose with the weather here now, like it's pitches closed very easy and things mm. are mm. we're under pressure this weekend to go ahead, but like then it's uh, two or three weeks uh, the middle of June, I think, league will be over and championship is penciled in to be finished by the 
uh, means the end of July. So it's actually a few weeks earlier than every other year. And so, yeah, the next eight, nine, ten weeks will be hectic enough training and we'll have a lot of games, constant steady flow games every Sunday and things. And then we'll have a break and probably state games in October time then where all the states come together and have they have their field their best teams and I think it's penciled in. It's not fully confirmed yet for uh, if it'll go ahead or not this year, but it's, if it does, it'll take place in Br- Brisbane. Okay. So that's a three, three or four day event as well. Like, so it's uh, <laughs> we'll we'll get much, together. Won't be much work done for those three or four days either then. <laughs> uh, I'll do, I'll do oh. get together a good celebration. Johnny is shaking uh, his head down the bottom here. He's already oh. either dreading it or looking forward to it. I can't tell which. No, no. not doing <laughs> it again. He's a broken man after the last few by the looks of it. So. I've done enough of them. You've done enough of them, fair enough, yeah. A seasoned veteran of, of the days, yeah. I think I've missed three. That's that's an impressive record. You'd probably have to make up for the three, though, won't you? Yeah, knock out of the next three. <laughs> great, great way to make up for it, all right, Jeff. Uh, uh, if, uh, if I throw you on the spot, uh, Johnny, and then William will ask you as well what you think, uh, if you could get a or of McAdalens to have a shot at, at a county in Ireland, who would you most like to have a shot at? It's serious talk mm-hmm. to this one. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, I've no idea. There's a couple of counties after going through my head, but um, county. I right, give us the ninety-eight Killer team. Oh, nice, <clears throat> nice. Yeah, I'll definitely take that. I'll pass that one on to Johnny Doyle. He's uh, he's yeah. coming up in a few episodes' time. I'll have to I'll have to mention the that one him. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I like that one. Yeah, William. Who would you uh, Who would you take on? Oh, a team from the past or current or doesn't matter. I, I have that's the first time actually anyone's ever said a team from the past. Now that Johnny says it, it's actually yeah, it's, it's even more interesting. Yeah, world, yeah it's, no, it's brilliant. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, uh, it's Galway, I suppose, because our our holding manager here would be a Galway man, and I suppose we had there's a lad at home. I suppose a lot of boys would love to get a crack at him too. Jack Can Jack Canning. Can I can't so, from Galway? Shocking. Yeah. <laughs> So if you got him in with Galway there, there's be a lot of boys here that would love to have a crack at him. <laughs> he would wasn't take on it. Wasn't it the '98 Killer team? Your man took the 14 steps and got the goal. Uh, Lynch, 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 yeah. '98 was, yeah. Kieran Lynch. Kieran Lynch no. was a Martin Lynch. Martin Lynch. Martin, Martin Lynch. Lynch. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> but we let Martin Lynch decide how many steps he took, I suppose. So. <laughs> You could yeah, back back then. You could probably take you could probably take a few more steps, I suppose, than you than you get yeah. away with nowadays. Yeah, uh, right. That's interesting. So Galway and the ninety eight <clears throat> ninety eight team, right? I'll have to remember those. Um, the the last question, I'll ask you, and then there's a few couple of quick fire ones that are Australia Ireland related ones that I I gave to Colin and the lads the other day as well. So we'll <clears throat> we'll have to see how you guys get on. Uh, William, put you on the spot once one last time. Who would be the greatest GA player in your lifetime? Oh, that I've seen. I often have debates this because everyone you ask will always pick a forward. Mm. I always say if you don't win the battles from one to nine, uh, a lot of the them forwards mightn't. Oh, true, Kerry. Yeah. I know I do not I say it's my name. Johnny, who would you pick then? Very hard to pick one. Mm. Leighton Glynn of Wicklow. No. Ah, Leighton Glynn, look at He's. Fabulous footballer, mm. but just born in the wrong place. Well, if you were from, if you're from Ratnew, where he's from, he's born in the right place. Yeah, fair enough. <coughs> or Lenny, whatever, whichever one it is. But uh, I go back to the '95 Dublin half back line and probably pick Paul Hearn. Like that, 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 that Dublin team, that half back line is excellent to watch. Yeah, that's that's an interesting one. That's definitely that's definitely a first, well. first. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I love the way you're throwing in a few curveballs here. You're giving me something to think about for uh mm. for the next people who come on after as well. So <laughs> uh the last few questions then are uh I'll throw one at you each um as we go along. Uh William, you have a choice between Fair City or Home and Away. Home and away. Home and away, good choice, yeah. Uh Johnny, you can choose uh, Subway or Supermax. Supermax. Supermax, good shout. Uh, William uh, Alf Stewart or Duncan Stewart Alf, Alf Stewart <laughs> I like that one uh, 
Johnny, you can choose between uh, maybe I should change this one up slightly, but uh, you can choose Bondi or Blessington. Oh, Jesus, I'll stay in Bondi. Stay in Bondi, okay, I'll take that. Uh, yeah. William, you can choose uh, the Sydney Opera House or the Gaiety Theatre. Or maybe I should pick actually a change that the Sydney Opera House or the INAC down in Killarney. I was I was in the INAC, I was never in the Sydney Opera House. I go with the INAC. ADC, lovely, yeah. And the last one I'm going to ask both of you because it's a vital one. Uh, Johnny, the Aussie barbecue or the full Irish? Oh, Jesus, no. Ah, full Irish. Full Irish, okay. Take that. And uh, William, same one, so. Full Irish. All the full way. Irish, okay. Yeah, true Irishman. I like that, yeah. Uh, yeah. Is there any, uh, I have two things, actually, at the end. Um, can, William, can the gear your club have be bought online anywhere for people over here who like to Collect stuff. Yeah, it can all be bought on O'Neill's. Okay. So O'Neill's. We, we'd have all on O'Neill's website, like all kid sizes, everything with all the up to date sponsors and mm. all that. Totally. So everything we bought through O'Neill's over the last couple of years, yeah. O'Neill's would have an office here in uh, in Adelaide over the last couple of years, and you'll see them there over the last two, three years. The, the NRL teams, like the Pinder Panthers, they sponsor, they they do all their jerseys and everything as well. Like, so they're, they're they're getting into with the Aussie sports here a good bit too and they're doing well here. Yeah, so I um I sure look when I was in Australia in twenty uh every I think every second person I walked past had had an O'Neill's top or a GA jersey of some sort on. So yeah, it was uh I guess they're they're still fairly big out there anyway. So and uh the the last thing uh Johnny is for anyone back home here you wanna say hello to when this goes out in, in July, will anyone be listening in? Um, Jesus. Um, Tasha, I suppose I'll have to say hello to the old pair and <laughs> brothers and sisters, nieces and nephews at home, and all the old club mates. Yeah, I thought you might get on the road and one of the lads who just went, I ah, know, fucked a lot of them to be grand. Well, I could get that too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, William, is there anyone in uh, down in Brosna from the kingdom? Uh, just the same, my mother and father, and brothers and sisters, and nieces, and Nephews and all that, and friends that I'd be very bad to keep in contact with people. So just to be <laughs> shout out to everyone. Yeah, for play, yes. And uh, all the all the past players, of course, Mike Nallan, I suppose, who uh, wandered wandered around and have come back to Ireland, I suppose, as well. So, um, yeah, yeah if, uh, lads, look, thanks, thanks so much for coming on. I really appreciate appreciate you giving up um, well evening time, I suppose, for you guys out there. But uh, yeah. I'll I'll I keep in t- yeah I'll keep in touch with you, and this will probably be. Uh, July time, I think, because the, the first season is still running for another eight or nine weeks, and um, we'll kick into the second one then. And uh, yeah, but I'll keep in touch with you. And uh, thanks so much for coming on, I really appreciate it. And wish you the best when all going back to kicking kick football again in a few weeks. And the weather is good. And William, I hope you're not sent home from work too many times in the next few weeks. <laughs> no, no problem. And thanks for reaching out, Jason. It's not a, a pleasure. Yeah, um, no. it was great to be able to come on here and have a chat and catch yeah. up. And- it's nice, nice, yeah, nice to talk to someone outside of five kilometers as well, which is lovely. So, <laughs> look forward to hearing it in a couple of weeks when you were on um, on air. All sorted, yeah. Look, uh, thanks so much, guys. I really appreciate it, and I'll uh, I'll keep in touch. I'll talk to you again soon. No problem. Not a problem. Thank Bye you. Yourself. See you later. Good Thank luck. Bye bye. Coming up the next day on the Loaf of Bread GA Global, we cut into our next slice. Can I go when I was coaching? There's a the, yeah. when I talk about when you said tough there. I was coaching the ladies last um, last season against the against Qatar actually, and it was uh, it was like a royal rumble and a little <laughs> bit of football thrown in. There was nice. uh, hair being pulled and elbows being thrown and rugby tackles and the whole lot. Now it was uh, I we the two clubs were given as good as they got. I wouldn't say one was worse than the other. So uh, okay, that was, that's the one that stands out in my head. Yeah. Junior ladies football in the Middle East is a bloodbath. <laughs> Sounds like junior football in Ireland, so a bit of a bloodbath as well, yeah. <laughs> On slice 12 of GA Global, we fly back to the Middle East and stop off in the beautiful United Arab Emirates. It is here we catch up with all the happenings at Jumeirah Gales GEA. I chat to Dublin man Luke, Wicklow man Niall and Wexford lady Naomi, all about life in the desert sun. We chat all GEA in the Middle East, the rising standards and notoriety in the region, Rivalries of Dubai, Bahrain, Qatar, Oman and others. And of course the vital questions, like choosing between the Dubai monorail or the Dart to Bray, shopping in the Dubai Mall or Blanchardstown, and which is better, a camel ride in the desert or a piggyback home. 
That's next Thursday morning from 9am as we continue the journey with two slices a week. I'll see you at the arrivals hall but until then check out the various clubs on the Instagram page and see all the amazing work they do and some of the nicest GA gear going. Find the podcast on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter and on TikTok. Email loafofbreadpod at gmail.com or just simply hit the follow button and spread the word of the Loaf of Bread GA pod across the globe. Slonagy.